Michelle Cleveland, and we did our research project on Eastern and Appalachian cottontails. So the goals of this project were to find ways for rehabilitators and researchers to distinguish physical characteristics between Eastern and Appalachian cottontails in a captive setting, to determine average growth patterns for each species in order to assist the wildlife rehabilitators in the assessment of their health while at the centers, and then to establish a workable wean weight for the Appalachian cottontails and compare it to the already established workable wean weight of the Eastern cottontails. All right, so a little bit of background information first. Um, currently, the Eastern cottontail is well-researched in the wild. We know a lot about them, where they live, what they eat, um, but they still have low success rates in rehabilitation when they're brought in injured or orphaned. Um, they still, a large percentage of them die before they're able to be released. Um, and then the Appalachian cottontail is not well researched in the wild and is not even identified correctly a lot of times in rehabilitation because people don't know either that they exist or don't know how to identify that it is an Appalachian cottontail. Um, so here we have a couple of range maps. This one is for the eastern cottontail. So you can see they are found pretty much everywhere. Um, they've been introduced to a couple of states out here and are doing really well in those little pockets. Um, they can live in almost any sort of habitat, so they're very adaptable. Whereas the Appalachian cottontail is found, as its name suggests, in the Appalachian Mountains. Um, and their populations are, they occur in pockets, so the Appalachians that live up here don't breed with the Appalachians that are down here um, because they're a high elevation species. So they don't come down one mountain and up another mountain to find more of their species. They're sort of actually <coughs> in their own places. So our hypotheses. Based on our previous experience, we predicted that the average growth patterns would show Appalachian cottontails as being consistently larger than the eastern cottontails during the first month of life because that's where our project focused. Um, we also predicted that Appalachian cottontails would need to reach a higher weight than the eastern cottontails before we could successfully wean them. So first of all, our method. Um, our juvenile eastern cottontails came from a number of counties, um, including Alexander, Avery, Buncombe, Forsyth, Guilford, Iredell, and Watauga, um, while the Appalachian cottontails came only from the higher elevation counties, um, Avery, Buncombe, and Watauga. <coughs> the cottontails were raised at our houses, um, and the eastern cottontails were, because they're found all across the state, we were able to release them just in parks and fields near our homes while the Appalachian cottontails had to be driven all the way back up here um, to be released either in Banner Elk or in the Elk. So method preparation and admission. First, me and Claire both had to obtain our North Carolina Wildlife Rehabilitation License for small mammals from the North Carolina Wildlife Resource Commission to be legally allowed to do this. We acquired juvenile cottontails from fellow rehabilitators, veterinarians, and concerned citizens. Upon arrival, we administered physical exams to all of them, and if needed, they were given first aid, fluids, and medication. After that, they were weighed so we could calculate the formula amounts for their feeding times. In this graph, it shows um, the problems. We catalog all of the problems upon entry. So 40% of the bunnies were cat and dog attacks. Another 40% were what we call kidnapped. It's where somebody found their nest and they didn't see the mother, so they were like, oh no, she's abandoned them, and the, so they just picked up the bunny, baby bunnies and they bring them to you. 10% um, were abandoned by their mothers. Um, a couple were <coughs> abandoned during like really bad storms where the mother just wasn't able to move the whole nest to a new location. Three of them, or 6%, were injuries caused by lawn equipment where the lawnmower rode over the nest, or one of them got weed whacked, <laughs> and then we had a couple, 4%, were actually from a bonfire where the mother had built the nest in the brush pile and the owners or of the property unknowingly lit the uh, pile on fire. So once we had the rabbits stable, um, they were placed in a 100 liter big plastic clear bin um, with our other current patients and added to the daily feeding schedule. Um, they were weighed every morning and fed Fox Valley Mandel formula according to a predetermined system. And that amount of formula fluctuated with their weight. Um, we weighed them at appropriate times and then we released them at
at an appropriate location, either where we lived or up here, um, in the evening, specifically because cottontails are crepuscular, which means that they're active more at dawn and dusk. So we didn't want to throw them out um, in a strange place in the middle of the day and have them be kind of off. No, current rehabilitation manuals say that you should never combine cottontails from two separate litters as fighting and bullying will occur. However, we found this to be false. Our older rabbits um, fostered our younger ones. Mm -hmm. And the older guy is the guy in the middle sitting on top. <laughs> <laughs> so, part of our results um, was the identification of the two species. Um, so these were some of the things, some of which came out of our research from internet and books, and some of which came from our own observations. So you can see, usually, there is a difference in the markings on the forehead or the head. Um, the eastern cottontail usually has a white spot further down on the forehead, um, while the Appalachian cottontail has a spot between its ears, which is black. Um, the eastern cottontail doesn't always have the white spot, um, which makes identification a little bit tricky sometimes. If you get in a rabbit that doesn't have a white spot, then you've got some figuring out to do. Um, but if you know that it has a white spot, then you know it's an eastern cottontail because that's the definitive mark. Um, their ears are a little different. The eastern cottontails have longer, more pointed ears and with the dusty black edging on them. While the Appalachian cottontails have shorter, more rounded ears, and they have very distinct black edges on the ears. It looks like somebody painted them with eyeliner. <laughs> um, and then behind the neck, or behind your head, on the nape of the neck, both have an orangish patch of fur there, um, but the Appalachian cottontail is much more distinct and it's brighter. Um, the overall coloring on the upper body also varies between the two species, but that can be hard to tell if you don't have one next to the other, um, because rabbits are just sort of generally brown. And if you can't see the two species next to each other, it's hard to tell whether they're lighter or darker. Um, the two also have a different shaped head the Easterns have a longer head and a pointed nose, um, which is sort of more typical of if you see a cartoon rabbit. It's shaped sort of like an Eastern cottontail. Um, well, the Appalachians have a square head and a blunted nose, sort of more like um, a pug or a dog than <laughs> bred to have a, a square head. Um, and then just as a, an observation, as we worked with these animals, um, we would suggest that the Eastern cottontail um, are a little more flexible, and you, if you get them up, you can feel all of their bones. Um, whereas the Appalachians are just built very solidly, and you pick them up, and they're just sort of a chunk. Um, <laughs> so holding them in the hand, they definitely feel different. Um, so then here we've got two pictures. This is an eastern cottontail, and you can see the white spot on the forehead, the longer ears, and just a little bit of black edging here, as well as the lighter coloration. Well, the, e the uh, Appalachian cottontail has this black spot between its ears, no white spot on the forehead, shorter, rounder ears, and this really dark black mm -hmm. edging here, as well as a little bit darker coloration. So the identification behavioral results, um, this was just upon us working with them for three months. Uh, Eastern cottontails can't jump out of the 100 liter tubs at any point during the first month of their life. An Appalachian that's only two and a half weeks old, however, can jump out of the tub and will if you do not have <laughs> Claire had a couple of experiences where she came back and the Appalachian rabbit, before we knew this, was jumped out of the cage and was in her room. <laughs> um, before we knew, Eastern cottontails can become very friendly with their handlers and will even beg you to feed them. Um, however, once weaning begins, they revert back to being wild very quickly. Um, Appalachian rabbits don't like people. They stay wild through the whole process. The Easterns are rather easy to catch out of the tub and will sit still on the scale so you can sort of just put them down and sort of guard them with your hands and they'll stay there. The Appalachians are very difficult to catch. They run around a lot and weighing them you have to like almost keep your hands cupped over them without touching the scale or they'll jump off. <laughs> um, the Easterns may fight the feedings but they're, it's really easy to force a syringe into their mouth if they're refusing food. Appalachians, it's very difficult to do that. They're really strong, and they'll push the food away with their front paws and just reject it. Um, so here, these are our um, our results, our raw data. Um, so don't don't worry about this too much. It looks really complicated, um, but you should know that the black lines are Appalachian.
Russian cottontails, and the blues and greens and purples in here are the eastern cottontails. So you can see there's a little bit of overlap, um, but the blacks are definitely towards the top. Uh, but then we went back through and we averaged at each day of age all of the weights for each species that we had um, recorded. So this lighter blue line is for the eastern cottontails, and the darker blue line is the Appalachian cottontail. So you can see that the Appalachian cottontails, on average, are consistently larger than the eastern cottontails. Um, and then we've also added these couple of lines. This one is where, if this is the weight at which we would wean an eastern cottontail, and this is the weight at which we would wean an Appalachian cottontail. Um, and this was an important part of our study um, because when we first got in our Appalachian cottontail, um, we didn't know at what point to wean them, um, but you can see if you wean an eastern cottontail at 90 grams, they are about three weeks old, a little more. Um, whereas if you try to wean an Appalachian cottontail at 90 grams, they're not even two weeks old yet. Um, and we found that developmentally, they were not ready to handle weaning at 90 grams. Um, so with a little bit of experimentation, we found that 120 grams works a lot better. So this is the same graph, but it shows the weight bars in the middle, the differences between the two. So the most similar weight was on day, I think, five of life at 15.4 grams, where the Appalachian cocktail was still heavier. And the biggest weight difference is all over by Claire. <laughs> at 45.8 grams, um, this is right before the Eastern's release. Um, the, the overall difference, the average of all of those together is 29.5 grams, with the Appalachian being heavier than the Eastern cocktail. So in these pictures, this little guy on the left on both pictures is an eastern cottontail. You can see the white line. This big guy is the app. Note the difference in their face. The eastern nose comes to that point. The Appalachian sort of has a blunter nose. And the eastern cottontail in these pictures is 11 days old, whereas the Appalachian cottontail is only 8 days old. So that's the size difference. <coughs> future studies, um, there could be a repeat of this particular study to gain a larger Appalachian cottontail size because we didn't have a whole lot. They're a rather rare species. Um, you could study the average growth patterns into adulthood to determine the crossover point because as adults, eastern cottontails are heavier than an Appalachian cottontail. Um, and then you could live track and tag the Appalachian cottontails and in order to use trail cameras to identify um, their, you know, what habitats they really like and what food sources they like because there's not a whole lot of studies out there on that either. So, and then our acknowledgement, um, Dr. Diana Fischesser, um, for providing the cottontails. She was our main provider of our cottontails. Um, Dr. Amber McNamara, uh, she gave us the medical advice that we needed if we'd gotten like the bonfire bunnies and the weed whacker. <laughs> uh, Dr. Steve for providing the information. We got a lot of our books from Dr. Steve. Um, Dr. Gene Spears, he gave us this idea in the first place. Like, we didn't even know there were two separate species until he said something. So thank you. <laughs> um, Dr. Claude Pyatt for his constructive feedback because we did give him some of our papers and stuff and he told us how to fix it. Isper Zoy is actually a rehabilitator in Virginia, in the Appalachian Mountains of Virginia, and she provided information on four other Appalachian cottontails that didn't ever come to our care. Um, my local vet, Dr. Michael Tracy, he provided uh, free medications for my bunny since I was all the way down here and it's a seven hour drive for me to get up here because um, I live on the coast. Um, our parents and <laughs> other family members were dealing with us because at points we had 19 rabbits at our house 
at a time. <laughs> so, got a little hectic. Uh, and then for our service project, we have both been working at the Wildlife Rehab Center all semester, um, doing both basic rehabilitation um, as well as educational programs and working with new students. Thank you. <laughs>